That's great. All right. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Q, and uh, thank uh, Group Link and everyone who's attending today um, for this next uh, um, 45 minutes or so. I'm going to talk to you about GroupWise, and uh, we're going to look at a little bit uh, in, you know, at our roadmap here. Uh, now, I know on the title, or maybe as part of the invitation, it said GroupWise 8.3. Uh, 8.3 is maybe what it might be called. It, it's possible it could go to a, a fully different release. You know, you know, could be nine. Uh, it could align with a year, and so on. Uh, but you know, the code name to 8.3 is actually Groupwise ASCOT, uh, ASCOT, and that's what I will. Um, uh, show or explain most of uh, during today's presentation. Uh, so, you know, if you want to call it 8.3, you know, there's a likelihood it may not make that that exact name. So just keep that in mind. Uh, again, my name is Charles Gonzalez. You'll see my email address there. Uh, and uh, here my agenda is, is I just want to kind of quickly overview GroupWise 8 for you. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that most of you are at this level. I'm just going to kind of scan through it to talk about some of its current features, uh, and hopefully you're taking advantage of some of those features today. And then we'll look at ASCOT. Again, that would be the next release. Uh, I'll just say up front right now at this point, uh, it looks like we're about a year uh, or uh, less on that. So beginning of next year is when we should anticipate uh, the ASCOT release. Uh, again, again, version name not fully um, agreed upon yet, but uh, uh, that we'll be looking at it as we call it ASCOT here. Uh, a couple other areas I, I do want to touch on, uh, kind of going into you know um, just a review really of where we're at with mobility uh, and and look at futures there and how that works with both groupwise and with our data synchronizer technology. Uh, and then we'll conclude. Uh, now, one thing, uh, uh, let me ask Q, do I need to monitor the question part? Because I'm in full screen mode, and just let me know if there's someone who will be able to manage that. And, you know, of course, we can interrupt, or if you want to do Q&A at the end. I'm assuming I'm still online here. Um, just, uh, am I supposed to monitor the, uh, the question and answer area? Uh, host uh, Q or somebody can tell me. Yeah, I w I'll monitor that and then I'll I'll let you know. Um, okay, and, great. and we'll go to a. What we'll do is I think we'll hold that till the end. Okay. And great. Uh, and and then we'll just go have a Q and A session at the end. <clears throat> okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll go ahead if you if you just feel free to interrupt if need be. All right. So you know quickly you know from the area of collaboration that I um, I work in, uh, you know these are three of the main solution products from a, a user, personal, and team productivity standpoint. So we're going to talk today about GroupWise. Of course, there are two other solutions um, uh, that we have, which are going to be the Novell Vibe on-prem and the Novell Vibe Cloud. Uh, Novell Vibe on-prem uh, was basically our teaming solution. Uh, it, uh, you know, if you're familiar with teaming, it provided the ability where you can create, you know, team workspace areas. Uh, it might be departmental project type uh, workspaces, uh, your you know management of documents. Uh, so a great place for knowledge depository. Very uh, uh, you know compare it to SharePoint for those who are familiar with SharePoint. This is our solution. Again, it used to be called Novell Teaming. Uh, we've added a, added a lot of components uh, to it uh, from from a user uh, UI type interface to make it easier to manage for end users, uh, but also the ability where it integrates greatly with GroupWise. And then another product that we have coming out uh, also with that same Vibe name will be called Novell Vibe Cloud. Uh, it has a lot of same similarities to what on-prem provide. Uh, it will release uh, here in about a month. Uh, so basically this will be a hosted release. Uh, again, similarities to what on-prem provides, but there are some differences in this initial release. Uh, now, I, I, I bring these up because, you know, our goal is, is to provide integration 
amongst all of our solutions. And so that means is uh, today, for example, I can do group-wise integration to Novell Teaming or Novell Vibe On-Prem and vice versa. I can integrate information from the Novell Vibe On-Prem over to group-wise. And what you'll see is hopefully a lot of those same capabilities as we move to the cloud solution. Okay, so <clears throat> this screen here, uh, basically what I just wanted to show is kind of like some of the things that we concentrated on with version 8 and 8.02 is our last uh, release. Uh, so, you know, we, uh, and I'll touch on these with some some screenshots, uh, but, you know, we, we made improvements around task management, contact management, uh, improvements around calendar, and, and then, of course, that integration with Vive on-prem. Uh, but, but, you know, we'll continue to work on these types of integrations, and what you'll find is as we talk about GroupWise ASCOT, is that there will be more improvements with contact management, more improvements with calendar. And so if you look here on the right-hand side under the next, uh, these, again, uh, I will go through, you know, explaining what we're doing from a 64-bit standpoint, the contact side, uh, the, how we integrate, say, with Vibe on-prem, uh, integration with other solutions like Novell Messenger, enhancements, again, in the calendar side, and then uh, and some great enhancements in our web access solution. <clears throat> so, you know, those who, again, familiar with GroupWise, for the most part, GroupWise and GroupWise ASCOT, from a, especially from a Windows client standpoint, you know, these are the main components, and these will probably all stay in play as far as how GroupWise looks and feels. Uh, but, again, we're going to take certain pieces of this and enhance them even more. Uh, but one way of looking at this release of GroupWise uh, or this next release of GroupWise is uh, we've actually gone back from a development standpoint and are basically restructuring parts of GroupWise to allow us more capability, more functionality, more enhancements. Uh, and so, you know, to, for example, the calendar inside, it's getting a complete new look and feel uh, that you'll, you'll find. Uh, and the, you know, things that we're also doing, say, with web access, uh, a lot of the things that we're trying to do, say, with Calendar and, say, with Web Access, uh, we needed to improve on that back end. We needed to redevelop, uh, basically, to allow uh, ease of, of additions plus, you know, the, the ability where we can enhance with more and more features. Uh, so when, when GroupWise ASCOT first releases, you're probably going to say, well, there's not maybe a whole lot of differences, you know, maybe outside of Calendar or outside of Web Access. But the important thing is the, the plumbing underneath had to go through uh, a development type revamp in order for us to uh, carry it on uh, beyond, say, ASCOT. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things that I talk about will be things that are needed from an administration improvement uh, and, you know, not just, you know, what platform we put it on, but the ability where, you know, on that, on that back end, it allows, you know, not just administration, but also the ability where we can develop and move forward. But these are kind of the principal areas. You know, we have the home view, the calendar, our email, uh, integration with Novell Instant Messaging. And by the way, that was an updated solution uh, uh, in, in 2010. Uh, of course, the task area and contact area. So these next couple of slides I want to do is just kind of go overview quickly on GroupWise 8. Uh, and again, for those who have it, great. Uh, I hope you're taking advantage of what we call uh, the, the ability to create panels and views. Uh, this is an example of a home view. So, you know, the typical group-wise view, and in, in most people that I even see use clients like, say, a Google Mail uh, or a uh, Outlook, you just navigate from the right-hand, left-hand side, you click on your mailbox, you click, click on your calendar, you click on your cabinet. You're, you're using that as a way to navigate through your email. What the, the view gives me, the home view in this example gives me, is the ability where I can take those different cabinets or folders, those different areas, and create a view that allows me to be more productive. So in this, uh, this uh, screenshot here, we see that we have our calendar in the upper left. Uh, uh, down below is actually a website. That could be our Novell Teaming site, or it could be a site that you uh, interface with every day. Uh, 
as you can see, it can be both internal and uh, external. So we have a, a website to the New York Times. Maybe So we, we'll take advantage of the desktop's uh, browser capability so that we can be able to navigate through this dashboard, this view, this panel. Uh, there we have uh, our tasks uh, out to the right-hand side. So these are all the things that have been assigned to me. I have my contacts at the top. And then uh, I have uh, in the middle there my mailbox. But that can be arranged in many ways, and, and the end users have the capability of creating their own different views, and I can have multiple views. So maybe one view for, for maybe my every day getting through emails, setting up appointments. Then maybe if I'm working on uh, expenses or a certain project, I could have a project view and then have links to that website and so on. Uh, so an important enhancement, you know, actually the panel and the view capability came out with Group Y7. Uh, with Group Y8, we made it to where you can do more with those panels, add websites, uh, the ability to, you know, really dependent on the, the real estate of your, of, your, uh, of your display, your screen resolution, add multiple columns, as many as you need, and have as many rows as you want. <clears throat> so, again, I hope you're taking advantage of that. Uh, we did a lot of nice enhancements with contacts, um, the ability where it kind of looks like a Rolodex type look and feel. So this is looking at it from the personal standpoint. When I create address books and then I add my users or move users between different address books, so I was able to maintain and add more information per individual, per those contacts. So we did a, ni a lot of nice enhancements to the contact site. And what you're going to find out here in just a minute, some of the things that we'll do with Ascot uh, around contacts plus the group-wise system address book, what, what kind of enhancements we'll have there. Uh, but these are just showing you some examples. You know, I can put in personal website information about my contact, uh, notes about my contact, uh, multiple, you know, like birth dates, emails, phone numbers, et cetera. Uh, another nice thing is, is when I go and look at the history on a contact, it'll show me all email that that person sent me or vice versa, all email I've sent them, including appointments and tasks and so on. Uh, we did some nice enhancements on the task side with GroupWise 8. Uh, basically here, <clears throat> it's showing me the ability where I can uh, display percent complete and make that change. So then, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's giving me an idea where I'm at with a task uh, and, and so on. Or as I assign a task out, I can visualize where maybe the individuals are uh, in completing those tasks. Uh, one other thing that well, here it is, Vive On-Prem with Group within GroupWise. So we talk about the integration. So the, the best integration you're going to get with Vive On-Prem, again, this formerly used to be called Teaming, is going to be with GroupWise 8 and 802 specifically. So if you're looking at uh, our Teaming or our Vive On-Prem solution and you want integration with GroupWise, uh, definitely recommend that you get to the latest version of GroupWise, with, which is 8.02. Uh, so what would happen then is in, within GroupWise, and this screenshot uh, kind of simulates that, is that basically I can view uh, teaming like a folder or a cabinet. And that, does, that what that means then is, is I don't have to necessarily go into a separate browser to get into my teaming information. What this also allows me to do is I can see that teaming folder separate from my mailbox, from my calendar folder, from my cabinet folder. And what would allow me to do is to drag information, say, from GroupWise, such as an email, and drag that in to a teaming or a Vive on-prem workspace. So, we're, you know, today this release allows me to bring information, say, from GroupWise over to teaming, just drag and drop that email in, and it will then be posted, say, as a blog entry. And now when users, they could go and look at that email in the teaming site. Uh, uh, some other integration components that we're working on are the ability where we'll have more functionality of, uh, of more teaming and group-wise uh, being able to sync across to each other. Uh, right now, most of the sync capability from Vive On-Prem uh, are kind of like calendars, so I can sync my calendars over to group-wise. I can sync tasks. So if people assign me a task on Vive On-Prem, I can have that task sync over to GroupWise, and it'll show up there. So I have it now in two different places. So, you know, think of it this way. There are going to be some users uh, who prefer GroupWise as their main client, as that main application, and they want to set up the dashboard where they can maybe even see uh, Vive on-prem information. 
but you know when they go and manage and do their tasks, they want to do it through the GroupWise interface. Uh, when they look at their appointments, they want to look at their appointments through the GroupWise interface. So that's a choice. And so the ability, though, that we will provide is that where I can take those vibe on-prem tasks and calendar type events and sync those over to GroupWise so I can see them on that end. What's coming then in the future is the ability where I'll be able to sync the GroupWise calendars, the GroupWise task into Vibe on-prem. So then if I prefer to, to do things on the Vibe on-prem through, a, say, a browser, then I'll have the ability to see those events, see those tasks on that end. So, you know, maybe taking advantage of, of the social side that Vibe on-prem uh, gives me. Uh, so kind of giving you that choice, uh, especially, you know, new users coming in, they might want Vibe on-prem because it's more of a social Facebook type uh, uh, look and feel. And then based on that, they would be able to look at those appointments, those tasks there. But as they create new tasks and appointments for others, uh, basically uh, and a, a person who's been used to using GroupWise for many years would be able to use that to, to see that Vibe on-prem information and then, again, send it out to where then the other user sees it through their browser. Okay, so let's move over to the Ascot preview. Again, just to, to summarize, uh, this is the code name. Uh, uh, we have not made a definitive, uh, uh, you know, what if it's going to be GroupWise 8.3. I know that's what the, the presentation said. Uh, but we'll, we're looking at different names, uh, but uh, that, again, is due beginning of next year. All right, so the first uh, enhancement side of it is going to be the platform as far as the server platform side. Uh, uh, it will only be on SLES or Windows, so there's not going to be a NetWare version. Of course, NetWare uh, will be soon to uh, end of life in 2012, uh, so uh, the uh, what we'll do, in this, and this means all the agents, the, the MTA, the POA agents, those agents that you run today will be 100% on either SLES or Windows. Uh, now, the other thing is, is that they will be 64-bit only. Uh, and what that means is, is that uh, you're, uh, you know, you can run today the MTA, the POA, all those agents, the GUIA, and so on. You can run those uh, today on a 64-bit OS, uh, by the way. So that could be a SLES uh, a 10, 64-bit uh, box, or even SLES 11. And, but the agents themselves are 32-bit. Uh, so uh, what we've done here is we've made the agents 100% 64-bit. Now, I realize you're like, okay, if, if we're looking at 64-bit, uh, or maybe not, but you're looking at maybe I need to upgrade. Maybe you're still on a prior version of GroupWise 8, and you need to get it to 8, uh, so you're at 7. Uh, and, you know, um, you know, you look at this slide and you say, well, maybe I should wait for ASCOT. Well, in the meantime, you could go ahead and move to version 8 today, the most current release, 802, and you can put that on to a 64-bit system. And then that way, by the time ASCOT comes out, you would just upgrade those agents to the new 64-bit code. So again, just to, to reiterate, the 32-bit versions of MTA and uh, POA and all those agents, they will run on a 30 on a 64-bit OS. Uh, so you could have that system ready. And by the way, this could be a virtual uh, a, a virtual server. So it could be a VM, uh, and that could be in 64-bit mode and then basically add group by date today, and then when we go to ASCOT, you just change those agents over, and they're now 64-bit as opposed to 32-bit. Okay, on the administration side, uh, you know, we're doing a couple of things to help from, uh, uh, to ease administration. Uh, the first one is going to be Active Directory authentication, it, and, that, and, and that's actually possible today, but we're going to make it easier. Uh, and what we mean by this is, uh, you know, there, the ability today where I can do LDAP authentication uh, back to eDirectory, and of course uh, what that means is, is when a user goes to their GroupWise client uh, on Windows or any, you know, kind of desktop, uh, the ability where it's going to use that directory source for the password. It's not going to use the, the GroupWise database for the password. And, um, you know, this provides the ability where then my, my normal login, in this case, say, eDirectory, that password is going to be the same password as my GroupWise password. There's 
not a sync that goes back to the GroupWise database. You don't have to worry about putting a connector in. Uh, basically, today you can set up that LDAP authentication. So again, when the GroupWise user logs in, and they would use their eDirectory password. So you have the ability where you can actually set that up with Active Directory. So we're going to make that easier. So if there is a shop that has GroupWise and Active Directory uh, for some reason is primary versus eDirectory, you can then point that uh, uh, GroupWise password LDAP authentication to an Active Directory source. So we'll make that easier. Uh, the next thing is is the client server administration model. Uh, basically, uh, today when you set up uh, uh, the uh, the uh, GroupWise agents on a SLES box, uh, and then you need to manage them via Console One, you have to do a couple of things. Maybe you, you can one put Console One on that box to ha to allow you to uh, administer GroupWise in that SLES environment. Because uh, you know we still rely on Console One, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, but the other thing is, is you know if if I don't want to have to put Console One out there, I have the I have to have the ability through Console One to map to that SLES server. So then I have to map a drive. So maybe that requires that maybe I put OES on that box uh, uh, so that I can map to the uh, actual SLES or to the GroupWise environment. Uh, so, you know, again, and just, just for those who don't know this, but I can put GroupWise 100% on a SLES box without OES. Uh, but what this slide means here is the ability where I get away from having to map that drive. Uh, the improvements in the Console 1 and the Console 1 uh, type add-ons or plugins for GroupWise where they can talk uh, more directly with the MTA, with the POA, with the agents themselves, uh, to manage that SLES environment. So if you have Console 1 kind of even maybe from a network standpoint or as part of your OES environment and you add GroupWise on a 100% Linux box, then basically uh, the ability where I can manage those without having to map that as a uh, kind of an OES environment or map drive to that SLES environment in order to manage those agents. So we're, we've improved both on the agent side and on the console one side. Now the other thing, and this is one that I'm not certain will make it into the first release of ASCOT, but keep in mind again the idea behind the improvements with ASCOT were to uh, allow for a better infrastructure to allow for this next change. And one thing is, is you know, we get a lot of questions about managing group-wise. Is it best to do it through uh, you know, you know, the only way to do it today is ties to eDirectory and Console One. And, you know, when are we going to add an iManager component for that? And that's not going to happen. Basically, what we'll do is do something very similar to what ZenWorks did and provide a web-based interface that allows us then to connect into eDirectory but not require eDirectory. What this also means is, is the ability where we can manage or take group-wise and make it look 100% against Active Directory. So that gives then, you know, for those shops who may have made this, uh, the switch to AD, uh, but they still want uh, group-wise, they could use group-wise and, and then basically through the new management console that we'll provide, which will be web-based for group-wise, they'll add that integration component to go talk to Active Directory or if you're still eDirectory, still point to eDirectory. So that means no more Console 1, uh, and that means also no eDirectory requirement if you're Active Directory. Uh, now, that is one of our goals with ASCOT. Again, I'm not certain if that feature set will be 100% ready uh, when it releases. Uh, uh, the demos I've seen so far, and, and you know we're not even at beta yet, uh, still require Console 1. Uh, but uh, that's the idea is that a multi-platform environment, you know, whether it be Windows, SLES, but also Active Directory or eDirectory. Okay, the next uh, features that we've improved on are going to be contact side of things. Uh, here's where, um, you know, today we, if you as an individual go in and look at your group-wise address, uh, the system address book, and you go to your individual username as a you know in my case Charles Gonzalez 
and I go into system address book, I can't do much with that. It's basically managed uh, by the administrators. Uh, the information may have came from eDirectory or, or it was synced from some other source, but it's got my name, it's got my phone number, it's got other information, other attributes that basically are only managed from an administrator standpoint. So what we can, we'll be able to do with, in dynamic contacts uh, with ASCOT is the ability where I can go to my name and actually make changes to it, a phone number change, uh, you know, information about me that I want uh, that, that, you know, are attributes from a contact standpoint within the GroupWise address book. And then once I make that change, the ability where those could sync back to the source if you choose to have that happen. So if that information is, say, coming from eDirectory, the ability once I make a GroupWise uh, uh, address book change, system address book change individually, then I, that information would sync back to other sources uh, within the organization. Uh, of course, that, that's the, the goal, uh, but, you know, the important thing is, is a, as an individual, you can update your own information within the system address book. You do not have to depend on the administrators. Uh, the other thing is, is on the system address book side, is the ability to display pictures. Um, you know, we've been asked about this for many, many years, uh, so we'll add that capability. Uh, you know, that's something we actually added to the contact capability under personal address books uh, when GroupWise 8 shipped. Uh, so not to, to confuse you, it's the same capability, but we're talking now about the system address book for both of these uh, components, uh, the ability to update the information individually, and then the ability also to add pictures into the system address book. Okay, and the next topic area will be calendar and uh, so th this is uh, this is all uh, this is kind of a major overhaul. Uh, you know, when you go into Calendar and when you set up an appointment today, it basically looks like a group-wise email. You get your send, uh, who's it from, who your send to is. Basically, those are the people I'm inviting to the meeting. Uh, and then we add a couple of you know a couple of other fields. You know, what's the date of the meeting? What time? How long is the meeting going to be? Uh, then if I need to, you know, select a reoccurring event, I got to click a button to go in and, and choose the dates that that are reoccurring. Uh, uh, if I need to busy search, it's another button that I go busy search everyone that I've invited to into the uh, send to. Uh, so there's a lot of steps involved in creating appointments, uh, especially for someone uh, uh, might be admins within your organizations and so on that that have to do this all the time. You know, all the all this involved to set up an appointment to make sure everyone is available and so on. So what we're working on is where uh, the when you open up the appointment itself, it's a complete new interface that m makes more sense, more aligned with how you should create an event, a calendar event, an appointment, and so on. So you'll be able to busy search immediately. So as soon as you start putting in people's names, there will be part of the interface, it's showing available time. So it's not a separate button that I need to go search on Busy Search. Uh, you, you'll be able to, as you use resources or conference rooms and so on, the ability where it's going to show you, hey, these are the ones you typically uh, uh, use when you set up your meetings. Uh, uh, again, a resource, uh, maybe for a projector and so on. So it's going to give you that uh, kind of a quick drop down of the things that you're used to going to search for, um, and now you don't have to necessarily do that search. Uh, the, uh, the UI around reoccurrence, so that will be improved. So again, in that same look and feel, I can set up a reoccurring meeting a lot, lot quicker without having to go to a different button and then pick the dates that I want this to happen on. Uh, so a lot simpler simplicity, especially you know, for these year-long type meetings that happen every Friday, you know, the ability to set those up a lot easier. And then the multi-user view will also be overhauled. Uh, so for assistants that use that to say, I got to keep uh, track of, uh, of John, Susan, and all these different people, will have a complete different interface on that multi-user look uh, to where uh, it will be easier to navigate and understand where everyone will be at one time. All right. Uh, further on this ASCOT release, uh, we'll, we'll do improvements in the information sharing 
And and this is really where it ties in to Vibe on Prem. You know, the ability where I I can look at my my entire uh, folder. You know, we see some of that today with Groupwise uh, eight and Vibe on Prem today, but more improvements there. Uh, you know, the, the you know the ability where I can attach documents from Vibe on Prem, and you know, basically allow users to modify a centrally stored copy. So that, you know, again, getting back to that choice, that example where I said, okay. Maybe some people prefer to use GroupWise as their preferred uh, uh, client, their their dashboard, not just for email, but for other day-to-day uh, -day activities. And then there's going to be some that prefer to do it through Vibe on-prem. So here's where we're going to have, again, more functionality between the two. And so one of those will be attached documents from Vibe on-prem and allows users to modify the centrally stored copy. Uh, one other thing that I don't have a note here on, uh, but uh, the ability in, in this brings up, you know, the, you know, when you get an attachment today with a uh, uh, with an email, the ability where I can actually modify the attached document and it will then have a copy of. So rather than having to save the document out of the email, put it somewhere, make a change to it, then resend and then attach that document. You'll have the ability now where you could take a document that's attached and make modifications to that. I don't have a bullet on that anywhere, uh, but I do want to make mention that that's one of the uh, features that we're also planning for ASCOT. Uh, on the enterprise search, uh, you know, just again with that, uh, you know, the collaboration component of Vibe on Print and Groupwise, uh, just the ability where I can search and I, I can go in and search in Groupwise and it'll search my teaming folders. Again, uh, having 802 in GroupWise with Vibe on-prem, I, I can now view my teaming folders. Uh, and so I can uh, have that as part of a dashboard or a home view, uh, If again, if GroupWise is my preferred client. But, but the ability now where I can then go in and search GroupWise and, and search my teaming area. So, you know, we've added some of that capability today, uh, but we're going to enhance that even more to go in and look at the Vibe on-prem type folders. Okay, so let's move away now from the client side. Uh, uh, and, you know, those are kind of some of the major features that you'll see with ASCOT on the client side. And now let's talk about remote type access. So those companies that use a lot of web access, maybe some people that totally rely on web access. I know a few companies that are like that. Uh, we've made some nice enhancements. You know, the first thing is is and, and this is also a total overhaul on the on the web access back end. Uh, you know, so getting to a new development type back end for web access to allow us to add more and more features that are also on the client side as far as, you know, a Windows client. Uh, one of those is the ability to where I can sort my folders by different columns. So if you want to do it by date, if you want to do it by name. Uh, you want to do it by subject, uh, and you know if any of you have moved to Groupwise 8 and are using web access today, you'll notice a significant difference in the way messages are displayed, say versus Groupwise 7 and prior. Uh, just taking advantage again of, of web type uh, development code like AJAX and so on, we're able to refresh and show everything at once as opposed to display next 25, display next, display next, et cetera, et cetera. So you're able to just scroll through your email from a web access standpoint. So here we'll be able to sort quickly and provide a quick refresh rate so that you're seeing what's sorted. You don't have to wait. So if you have thousands of emails in your, in your inbox, the ability where I'll be able to sort on that column and get back a refresh of everything uh, uh, relatively quickly. Uh, calendar and improvements as well within Web Access. This has been a feature that's been asked by several companies. You know, I can go in into my current calendar uh, in GroupWise, the web calendar, and do reoccurring events. Well, if, if I'm relying on Web Access to be a main uh, uh, client for me from a web browser because I'm a remote user, I, don't, I can't use the full client, I, we need we need improvements there on the calendar inside. One of those will be the ability to do reoccurring events. Uh, so again, that's been uh, quietly you know quietly asked for as far as uh, that feature. Uh, the, the other thing is is the consolidation of Windows and Web Access uh, signatures. Uh, so uh, you know I can do it in both places. In fact, 
So I can go create a signature that could be my web access signature. I could be do one for my Windows access signature. I can combine them. Um, and, and then the support for HTML uh, in the signature. So you'll have the ability to create those signatures on the web access side, and they can be shared on the Windows side if you happen to use both. And then finally, support for simple forward, you know, rather than as a forward as an attachment on an email, basically you forward and the email will stay within the actual um, uh, email itself. Uh, so simple forward has been added. And the last component here is the support for Apple iPad. Uh, here, uh, basically, we are working on a client interface for iPad. Uh, you know, you might ask, well, what about Android? At least we're doing the iPad first, and, um, you know, it might be possible where we can port that, say, to Android. Now, you know, today you can do an iPad, you can do an iPhone, you can do an Android through our, our mobile uh, device. Now, the thing about doing or through our mobile connector, uh, the thing about doing it that way is I don't get the full group-wise feature capabilities. So by, by support for Apple iPod, what I mean here is, is we're coming out with a client that will support some of the client features you get today. So you're getting more group-wise feature capability as opposed to what does an iPhone do with email, what does an Android do with email. You're kind of limited in that an email client on, say, an Android or an iPad today is basically dependent on the email client that is provided by that platform. In this case, support for Apple on iPad will provide us a client that gives us more group-wise features and not just email or calendar or task-type features. Uh, so, you know, just uh, whether that comes out exactly when Ascot ships, uh, but that's part of it and that's part of that, again, revamp uh, that we expect early next year. Okay, on the mobility side, since we were talking about uh, – uh, this is just more of a reminder in, you know, on how things are, are moving forward on the mobility side. Uh, and, uh, again, this would be, say, versus what that iPad part is. That iPad is going to be a client that we'll provide. Uh, in this case, uh, on the mobility side, uh, if you are not aware of it, we replaced the old mobility uh, server with a new mobility uh, solution uh, that's based on Novell Data Synchronizer. So you, as GroupWise users, can download this today. Uh, what it is is it comes with a data synchronizer engine, a Novell GroupWise connector, and a mobility connector that allow you to talk to your Android devices, your iPhone devices, your iPad devices. You'll still use the email client that comes with those devices, uh, and and so and you'll use their calendar features, but the synchronization capability allows us to at least view email and reply back, uh, create new emails, create appointments, uh, add contacts, and and they would sync back into GroupWise and vice versa. So that's available. So uh, with the data sync piece, we'll sync email, contacts, and calendar. Uh, we are working with the next release. Now, this is based on ActiveSync, by the way. Uh, so that's the uh, preferred method that we're going to talk to these devices. So that includes, again, Androids, uh, iPhones, and Windows 7 type devices. So as long as they have an ActiveSync uh, capability, and that's what those email clients, those calendar iCal type calendars use, uh, we'll use the ActiveSync protocol. Uh, now, we I point here on tasks. That is coming. So the later versions of ActiveSync do have task capability. Uh, so we, we do plan to sync group-wise tasks to iPhones and Androids and the like uh, on the ActiveSync side. Uh, DataSync also supports other applications besides mobile devices, uh, such as Sugar CRM, Salesforce, and SharePoint. These are connectors that are actually available today. So this kind of goes with our DataSync uh, uh, strategy. I mean, the one thing about data, synchronization, uh, data synchronizer was is that we wanted a solution that just did more than manage group-wise and mobile devices. We wanted the ability to have a synchronizing solution that would allow us to synchronize contacts, say, from group-wise to Sugar CRM or to Salesforce or SharePoint. So the three connectors there, we call the 3S connectors, Sugar, Salesforce, and SharePoint, 
are connectors that are also available for the data synchronizer uh, uh, technology. Uh, and so if you have those type of applications, you could add those into this infrastructure and then have the ability where I could take contacts from Sugar CRM and have them synchronize over to, to my contacts and groupwise in Versa, and then the ability where I could then also take those and sync them over to my mobile devices. So the, again, these are the pieces that we'll synchronize with. Now, BlackBerry is there, uh, but BlackBerry doesn't use Active Sync. So on the BlackBerry side, we still recommend a BAS uh, server. Uh, we'll support the latest 501 uh, as far as how we'll, we'll integrate to it, and we'll use SOAP integration on this release. So that means no group-wise client is no longer required from an administration standpoint. Uh, we will continue to synchronize via BAS to BlackBerry because of our relationship with RIM, and this is the preferred way RIM uh, wants people to use and synchronize to BlackBerry. So we're not going to come out with an active sync solution. It's possible, you know, just depending on, you know, how things, uh, how we work things with RIM and how they prefer. Uh, but uh, today we, we recommend that you use BAS for BlackBerry integration. Uh, so just, uh, you know, uh, as far as what we have currently now with Data Synchronizer, again, we support email, calendars, and address books, so contacts, uh, both between GroupWise and the mobile devices. Uh, but we do have the ability where we can kill a device, uh, reset it, and so on. Uh, uh, but as we look at as enhancements coming, uh, one of the big ones will be HTML support, full HTML support. Another one will be the ability where we can do those tasks and notes. Again, that's not something that ActiveSync had prior, but with the newer versions of ActiveSync, we'll be able to add tasks and notes support. Uh, we'll also add additional calendar in busy search. So, you know, just like we've enhanced on the web access side, just like we're enhancing on the new Windows client, uh, we'll enhance calendar capabilities uh, both on busy search and, and uh, calendar and features. Um, let's move on. Now, and also depend on, you know, third parties here in that uh, third parties uh, like uh, Notify Link will have a device management solution. And in that device solution, they'll be able to get down in the detail of managing those those devices more, you know, such as, you know, limiting what those devices can do, um, more kill pill capabilities. And so we're going to partner more with, you know, companies like a Notify Link that will allow us to do more from a device management standpoint. Uh, but we'll we'll provide the general capabilities, like I say, reset a device, kill it, and so on. And then if you want full uh, you know, management of that device on what it can do, that's what we'll look at the device management solution that Notify Link uh, uh, offers. Okay, uh, I mentioned data synchronizer. This is an important component of our mobile solution. Again, you get this piece free for the group-wise and the mobile phone side of things. But there's other things that we add on this, on this solution, and that's the ability where we can talk to a CRM, an ERP application, uh, teaming applications. Uh, so that's where SharePoint might fly. That's also where Novell on-prem would come in. Novell Vive on-prem would have this uh, the, the connector capability through Data Synchronizer to synchronize information that could also go to your mobile devices. Uh, and, and so then we have email. So the solutions today, again, we've talked about our Sugar CRM, SharePoint, uh, and uh, Salesforce. Stay tuned. We'll have more applications, including Novell, Vive on-prem, and so on. And uh, the if and just so you know, again, you're entitled to GroupWise, uh, the the connector for uh, GroupWise, and the mobile connector. Uh, it will run on a SLES 11 64-bit uh, OS. You'll entitled to that SLES 11, and it will today uh, use a Postgres database by default. For futures, we're going to have more platforms. So, in other words, we'll have platforms that will – it'll be a Windows platform. Uh, we'll look at SLES 10 uh, and, and possibly different, you know, 32-bit and 64-bit. Uh, but we'll also give you the choice of multiple databases. So if you're an Oracle shop or if you use Microsoft SQL, you'll have the ability to use those databases as opposed to the Postgres that uh, we originally came out with. Uh, those also who use Vive on-prem – as soon as the Vive on-prem connector is available for DataSync, you'll be entitled to it as well. 
so that means then I could take Vive on-prem information, connect through the data synchronizer, and then have it display um, on my mobile device, uh, say, for contacts, uh, for calendars, and for tasks, uh, as an example. And this is just showing you again on that next, uh, again, we'll have additional platforms, Windows, other, you know, OES, Linux. We've got smaller shops who don't want to run a separate SLES box, so we'll, with the ability to run this on an OES box. Again, additional data support from Oracle down to Microsoft SQL. Uh, and then some of the connectors that we'll be looking at will be SAP. I know we're talking about Interwoven, uh, Documentum. Those are some other companies that we're, we're, we're looking at. And we're looking at maybe ways that we can use this technology to maybe integrate to Exchange or Outlook as well. Uh, this is just taking a glance uh, at our partners here uh, throughout. Uh, you know, we've got a great rich ecosystem. You'll see group link there, a great ecosystem of partners for GroupWise, uh, and hopefully continue to uh, grow that market and add, uh, you know, feature and functionality where we don't, they will. Uh, and, you know, our collaboration community, uh, you can go out to these different websites. If you're, if you're a, an administrator, you know, make sure you look at ngwlist.com, you know, get to the support forums, great areas to where you can get support from. Uh, so basically that was it. Hopefully you got an idea of where we're at with GroupWise 8. We also then, you know, looked at what ASCOT, some of the features that it's going to provide. Uh, and I talked a little bit about the mobility part of it, you know, because I felt it was important you f see the direction that we're going with data synchronizer and mobility there. So at this point, I guess I'll uh, hand it back over and we'll take some questions and answers. Let me uh, stop sharing. And uh, I'll uh, open it up to any questions if there were any that came up uh, uh, there, Q. Yes, um, let's see. We have a few here. It says, will GroupWise admins be able to rename the actual Vibe on-prem folder in GroupWise? Good question. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, uh, in fact, I can probably play with that. Um, now, you know, you can do it on the Vibe on-prem side, so you're just asking basically could I do it on the GroupWise side. I'll have to get an answer back to you on that. Good question. Okay, the next one, will we be able to sync multiple GroupWise calendars from different domains, multiple companies, into a single GroupWise or Vibe calendar? Yes, you could do that. Um, basically, because it's going back to Vibe on-prem, uh, the ability where I can take and sync uh, as you described, you, you would be able to do that. Uh, now, the, the one thing about that is, is that piece is not uh, yet available. You know, today I can go group, uh, Vibe on-prem, GroupWise, uh, Vibe on-prem calendars sync to GroupWise. Uh, but uh, when Ascot ships, uh, I will be able to sync from those GroupWise calendars, and multiples could could go into one Vibe on-prem calendar. Okay. Will management continue to be done in Console 1? So we talked about that, and the question, uh, my guess is, is the initial release of ASCOT will use ASCOT. From what I've seen from all uh, the alpha demos, we're still relying on console one. But the goal is to move to a new management console that will be 100% web-based and not directly tied to eDirectory and give me the choice of either tying it to eDirectory or Active Directory uh, as part of the configuration. Uh, but uh, today, Console 1 and uh, the next release, my, my guess is, is when it initial, initially comes out, it will have Console 1, and then as the year rolls on, uh, hopefully we'll have a new management console uh, that will, again, be 100% web-based. Uh, there won't be an iManager. Uh, it will, again, be very similar to how ZenWorks did their own management console. We'll come out with ours as well. Okay, let's see. Will ASCOT allow for integration of Outlook calendar appointment files? Okay, so you could today uh, take uh, calendars and subscribe to them with GroupWise 8, and meaning ASCOT. So I can uh, do a subscription to calendars on the Outlook side. Of course, if people send me appointments, uh, they should be functional on both sides, you know, from an iCal standard, so you know you can accept appointments. Uh, now, uh, as we work with the data sync technology, it may be possible we'll do more between Outlook and Exchange with calendars. 
that's still something we're looking at. Uh, but the data synchronizer might allow for a different way of synchronizing that information between two different systems. Uh, but again, just to, to reiterate, I can sync our, you know, through a subscription. Uh, I have that capability with GroupWise 8 that I can subscribe to calendar events on the Outlook. And then we'll just see what happens with data synchronizer and its ability to where maybe it can allow that as well. What about syncing a GroupWise folder to Vibe? Okay, so um, that part, um, I'll have to look to see if that's something that we're looking at. Uh, right now, I don't believe so, uh, but like that other question uh, regarding uh, uh, the Vibe on-prem and the administration side, I'll look for, for an answer on that if that's something that we'll be able to do. Uh, you know, I can today in the GroupWise client, with, provided it's GroupWise 802, I can drag a email and move it into a Vibe folder um, or workspace area. Uh, and, you know, so I have some of that drag and drop capability, uh, but to designate a cabinet or a folder area, and then make it sync to GroupWise and vice versa. I'll find out if that's something we're looking at. I would say probably with Ascot, that won't be there. Uh, now, it's possible with the teaming connector, we might be able to do something like that, but uh, I'll have to verify. Okay, uh, the next one is, will GroupWise ever have public folders so admins can push folders to a user's cabinet? Uh, yes, you will have that capability. So um, I don't have all the detail, but yeah, you will be have the ability to do public type folders. And I believe okay. that I, you know, I've seen different versions of uh, the um, ASCOT presentation. I'll verify where that is. It's possible that may be part of the ASCOT release, and so I'll have to get you an answer of when. Okay. Will web access have multi-user calendar support? Uh, I, again, I know we're improving on the group-wise piece. Uh, that, again, I've seen being talked about. Um, the presentation I had didn't show that, but uh, but I will verify if that's going to be part of the ASCOT release or soon thereafter. Uh, again, with the enhancements we got coming out with Calendar, that is supposed to be one of the features, and I'll just, val I'll just validate where it is from a roadmap standpoint. Okay. And the next one, and I'll be able to field this one, will the slide deck be available to download after the event? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get those slides to everyone uh, so that you can take a look at those. Okay, um, any plans to improve the Linux slash Max client to provide the same functionalities of a window client? So, you know, that's big on my list. And uh, at this <laughs> point, no. Um, the, the improvements that we're working on uh, are – are around web access, add more functionally in the web access. You know, if, if, if there's a goal, it would be, it would be n nice to have the web access through a browser have all the functionality that Windows has. Uh, and what it comes down to is just the demand itself. Uh, we just don't, uh, you know, I understand that you might be a Mac user or you might be a Linux user, but as a whole, you know, our, our principal desktop or platform from an end user standpoint are still Windows users. Uh, so we're continuing to work on enhancements and improvements there. Uh, so what you've seen from a Linux standpoint, and by the way, I'm still a big Linux top, uh, uh, desktop user as well. Uh, we've seen you know, some of the home view capability, uh, but pretty much haven't seen a lot happen since uh, version seven. And um, uh, so, and, and at this point, there isn't any, you know, de definitive roadmap for that cross-platform with the focus being on web access. That might be the direction we focus on uh, when it comes to cross-platform and more functionality. So, uh, at this point, no. Okay. And then what is the time frame for ASCOT? Uh, it, it, we're looking at, um, you know, I, you know, they're saying end of year, uh, I'm going to say beginning of next year is when, you know, the time frame. So beginning of 2012. Um, uh, it's possible that it could slip into this year, but right now uh, it's looking more like beginning of 2012. So, you know, that January time frame around then.
Okay. And it looks like we have time for a couple more questions. Um, will we be able to sync multiple calendars in mobility? Uh, yes, you should be able to. Now, uh, uh, and of course, the the sync part is going to depend on how the connector will will solve that. Uh, but I I would believe so. And I'll I, you know like the other connector type questions, you know how we're going to manage that. I'll just add that to under that mobility connector question on how things you know should sync. But yeah, you should be able to. Okay, and then is a Gmail connector in the works? Great question. I'll add that to the list and see. <laughs> as far as I've heard, no. But you know what? Gmail is getting more and more popular. Uh, just like you know, a lot of questions around can we do things with Outlook or Exchange? Have we talked about Gmail? So I'll, I'll find out. Okay, perfect. Well.